and welcome to the Old Manor House. Here we are in the walled garden. As you can see around me, it's looking very cold and frosty. It is the afternoon, it's early afternoon, about half past one. And the sun is very low in the sky. You see it's casting a nice light in the back there, on the south border, which is the warmest part of the garden. Everything else is pretty much over with, um, gone to sleep. All the herbaceous perennials there, look. The frost has finally finished them off, so we're going to perhaps give them a chop and um, I can make space for some of the bulbs that still have to go in, tulips and that. So in the spring there should be a, a nice tapestry of colour. This is the frosty side of the garden, as you can see, it's, I think it's probably north facing, or north-ish. There's Alice, out in all weathers, enjoying the cold weather, I don't think so. Um, there's the other beds here, still things to chop back. I put tulips in these beds already because I knew these were coldest and hardest to dig. As you can see, the echium has survived all the cold weather. I was too mindful to protect it because last year this bed here was full of them and they all died with the frost. So I'm going to see how we come up with this one. A little robin on there. Hello, little robin. That's on the caterpillar's head. Yeah, so I'm going to see how this survives and if it gets too cold, I might wrap it up. I say it's a lot of work and obviously we've got to be here all the time to make sure you can get these through the winter. I have some babies in the greenhouse which I'm hoping will survive and I can put those out in the summer. Now this is a really good idea, it's a little gas stove, I've had it for quite a long time. I just put a gas canister into there and light it and it boils really, really quick. So as you can see, we've got a nice old fashioned kettle, a little whistle on it, so I shall go and get on with my gardening. And when it whistles, I shall make myself a nice cup of coffee. And I may even give a sip to the mad hatter there, who looks a little bit thirsty and cold. So these are the pansies which I rescued from the supermarket yesterday evening. They were 40 pence a tray. You can see they've got some good roots in there. And they've picked up quite well. Most of them have recovered. There's one or two edge ones which look perhaps a bit beyond repair, but you never know, they can come back from the bottom. And overall it's about £1.60 on these. 
there's approximately I think by the time we finish it'll be about 80 plants there which is a really good price these will grow we can plant them on or put them on or put them straight out so at the moment I've just put them in the greenhouse to give them a chance because it's very cold they've been stressed and I want to give them a bit of an easy ride till it's time to put them out and the weather improves May as well have a little look around the greenhouse while we're in here. It's a little bit in disarray, but that time of year where everything just decays all at once and there's everything to do all at once. So anyway, these are the Sweet Williams which were growing last spring, summer, which you may have seen in one of my films earlier. Uh, these are all the seedlings of those. I did try to grow some in a tray. You can see there's a few here. It didn't do so well, and I put some outside as well, and they didn't do very well either. So I was looking along the paths and thought, there's some little seedlings here, I wonder what they are. So all of these in these pots here, and there's quite a lot of them, have come out of the gravel path. I picked them out not long ago and potted them all on. And there's some little pesky friends on there, which will need to be sorted out. Aphids. And they'll survive better in here because it's warmer. Even though it's probably just above freezing, I would imagine. There's a lovely chrysanthemum here, which Sean gave me cutting off and I've kept it here because I wanted to keep it safe from the bad weather and it's looking really pretty and considering it's flowering in December it's quite something isn't it there yeah, beautiful green flowers I'm hoping I get cuttings of this next year and have a few more and then there's some hyacinth in old clay pots there to go near the back of the house when it's time got a selection of other plants which I've rescued some have come out of the compost heap which I discovered um, got put there by mistake. So I've got some Bellis perennis. There's a mallow there. I've got this um, Millium effusum aureum. You can see the colour of it. It's really bright gold. And when that grows in the spring, early summer, big tall fronds, beautiful flowers. And it looks like it's all lit up. And here we have some Angelica. Now there's another one. All of these, I tried to grow them from seed myself in a tray, didn't grow. All of these came out of the gravel, so you can see, got four trays there, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve pots approximately, loads of free plants, cost absolutely nothing, and the compost they're in all came out of the compost heap, just there. So you can do gardening on the cheap, just have to look out, keep your eyes open for things, and be frugal, I think that's the fun of it, because you can say I've done all this, cost me virtually nothing. Still a few things to chop back. We have to prune the weeping pear trees there, the ornamental. And this tree here, which is a hawthorn, I think it's Paul Scarlet, it's red. Sweet Juliet the Rose, beautiful tree there, making lovely shadows on the wall. There's roses, they'll need pruning, maybe in the spring this year. Can you see the um, cardoon growing? They never seem to stop, they flower in late summer, then they die right back completely. They also seem to start growing for the next year in the winter. That's one of my babies from many years ago. The kind of um, kind of musifolia, what's left of it there. Been battered a bit, I say, but can't do much about the frost here. And I've put tons of um, compost on the bottom there. As have these plants here and hoping they'll survive. I'm pleased the tetrapanix hasn't yet succumbed to the frost. I'm hoping that's going to get really big next year. That's also got a nice mound of earth around it to protect its rootstock. Because that's where it'll come back from if the frost is too hard. Looking pretty though, I think, for December. I've still got a lot of structure in this garden. So when your plants actually die back, it's nice to have something there that kind of reveals itself. So when the plants have all gone, the herbaceous plants which seem to be the main feature of summer you have all this to look forward to the hedging and some of the shrubs and bushes have got growing in there 
Uh, <clears throat> now in this corner we have a tree peony. The lutea means yellow. It's yellow, can you see there? That's next year's buds ready to come out. And it won't be long till they do. This is the canna lily which was left in last year. This is Annii, which is one of the old variety. Gets really, really quite big. And that survived all year winter in the ground, so I'm going to leave it in again. The box hedging there suffered from blight again, but we're going to sort that out in the spring. As you can see, there's a lot to chop back still. The canna lilies here, this brown stick, and that brown stick there, and the one behind it. I'm leaving those in this winter. Um, last winter was much more severe than it has been so far. And I had a clump over there in the distance, and they all survived and came up again. So I thought rather than digging them up and having to faff around and store them somewhere, I'm going to put some compost on top of the um, roots and that should give more protection to what's underground and the frost will get into that piece there but underneath the theory is it won't frost the tubers and it didn't last year so let's hope and if it does i've still got plenty left because i've got some in the greenhouse too which i fetched from home to live here for the winter there's the fountain very frosty i switched it on for a moment but it just splashed everywhere you can see it's all crackled on top, very pretty.